everybody, I am here with Josh from The Bio Dude, and today we are going to transform our green tree python exhibit in the zoo into a bioactive one. I'm really excited for this. I first want to thank Emily and Ed for hosting me here at their beautiful Snake Discovery Zoo and their wonderful store. It's my first time up in up in Minnesota and I'm definitely not going to forget it. And I'm really excited <laughs> to build for these beautiful green tree pythons and to put a nice layer of substrate in here, to put some nice natural plants in here and to kind of make it pop for these brilliant creatures. And I'm really excited for it. We're excited too. We yeah. can't wait. So what's the plan? What's the first step? So the first step is we need to make sure that we are going to maintain their areas to bask. We know that being an, or an arboreal python that they need to have different levels to take in heat yep. for basic homeostasis. So a lot of the branches in here that that we have in here, I'm actually, I'm gonna leave them alone. Inside we have a female Meraki, a female Biak, and a male and a female Sarong green tree python. So a nice variety of whites, greens, of, and blues. Of the different localities. And I think that's one reason I love Chondro so much is because they're all different. All right, so I guess the first thing we'll have to do is take them out. Yes, we gotta <laughs> get these guys removed. We're gonna take some of the stuff out of this enclosure and then, and then we get to build. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. The only living plant in here at the moment is this banana tree that was gifted to us a few years ago. And it is in a really cool um, planter there. And the planter holds water, it's working out great, except the planter doesn't fit through the door. You have to turn it sideways, which means you have to take the plant out. So I think Josh, oh, looks like he's pruning the banana tree. Well, we'll just let him do his thing. I think he might still incorporate the tree into the enclosure, which would be really cool actually. How good's the soil? So what Josh is gonna do is use some of the current substrate since there's got some there's some good biomass in there, and he's going to mix it with the new BioDude substrate just to kind of help kickstart those bacteria colonies. I couldn't remember if I had already added some isopods and springtails into this, but turns out I had not. So luckily, Josh brought some springtails and isopods on the plane ride with him, and they made it through the um, checkpoint and the x-ray machine. So now we know isopods can be brought on a plane. So that's pretty cool. So what are you adding now? Okay, so essentially what I'm adding is, is I got a lot of this, I got some of the old substrate removed and I'm leaving about a half of an inch layer. Um, some of it was pretty wet to the point when I was squeezing it and a bunch of water was dripping. So that's the substrate that I removed, but the rest I'm gonna use to jump start. So what I'm adding in now is my is the BioShot. So um, the BioShot is essentially um, endo and ecto mycorrhizae uh, that we're gonna be putting into the terrarium, which is gonna form your symbiotic relationship with your plant roots. So essentially Essentially what I'm doing is I'm dumping in the bio shot into the base layer here and then once I add in all of my terra firma and my other biodegradables I'm going to be mixing it all together. Now what this is going to do is help jumpstart your microbiological process. Bio just isn't putting in springtails and isopods. In fact, springtails and isopods are going to remove, or isopods mainly remove essential things from your soil over time, calcium and other things like that. So we have to put it back in the soil. Adding these microbiological processes makes a huge difference with when it comes to the essential soil life and function of your terrarium. So would you say anybody who's starting a bioactive enclosure, whether it or not, it's a tropical or a more an air raid environment, mm -hmm. should they add the bio shot? Um, I highly recommend it because again, it's whether you're using live plants or not, it's also about your soil health. So you want to make sure that as we, you know, our terrarium maintains that our, our different mycorrhizal strains that like, are in literally every ecosystem in the planet are there because that's what we're doing. We are replicating their natural habitat. So it's really important that we replicate it as close as possible down to the biological cycles that happen in their substrate. Cause we know how important substrate is when it comes to reptile keeping. It helps with shedding, it helps with humidity, it helps with respiration and it helps with hydration. Here are the awesome live plants that the BioDude sent up here for this project. I wish I knew more about plants. Haley would probably know more than I do about what all these are called, but that's a plant and that's a plant and that's, that's a plant. A plant too. There we go. We've got some beautiful plants here today. 
Yeah, I think that'll that'll work because then they'd have several horizontal branches to sit on, and it would be right underneath that heat panel. Just getting this mounted on the side. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to screw that into the back. Okay. I think that would work though. Well, we got two screws underneath the branch over there to hold it up. We may have lost three more down there into the abyss in the process, but those are goners. We can't find them. We don't know where they went, but the important thing is that it's in. Yes, the, the branch is in, and that's going to be a really cool basking spot, a new one for the green tree pythons in addition to these vines. And I may have cheated. We cut the ends, but then I sand painted them, so you can't really tell. Yay, sand painting for the win! So we ran into an issue. There is a screw that's exposed on this vine here. It's just sticking out there and we can't remove it. I don't quite know how it got stuck in that position in the first place, but Josh, being cr a creative guy, is trying to use it to our benefit by just screwing on a mushroom ledge onto the screw. So then it wouldn't be exposed and the green trees would have something else to climb on and explore. So it could be a win-win if we can get it to work. <laughs> okay. New plan, we are going to drill a hole in the base of this mushroom ledge, then put a little bit of silicone in the hole, and then slide it onto the screw and it should stay put forever and ever and ever. That's the hope. That's the hope. Okay, a really nice hole. Hole is drilled. All the way. So then I bet if I just like put a dot of this silicone yeah. on it. There we go. That should work. We'll see. I will get it to work. All right, I'm gonna watch. Oh, will it slide on? Nice! That is perfect! All right, with that screw taken care of now, we are going to work, well, we as in Josh, is going to work on the substrate, right? Yep, so what, guys, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be putting in the Terra Sahara, or the Terra Firma substrate here at the bottom, mixed in with some different biodegradables. So we're gonna be using uh, sycamore bark, paperback bark, cork bark pieces to help create those uh, bacterial hotspots in the soil, because we're gonna be using a lot of soil in here. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing is getting in the biodegradables and getting in the substrate, getting it all mixed up, and then we get to building. Really Yay! excited. Then the plants! Yeah, then the plants. You know when you clean your room, it usually gets messy, messier before it gets cleaner? Well, I feel like Josh is the same way. We, uh... Our store is open to the public right now, and yeah. this is epic. Like, this is the biggest mess I think I've seen in here in a while, and I love it. Yeah, we're it, getting there. It means so. we're working hard and getting stuff done. Yeah, so I got about 12 bags of Firma in here so far. I'm gonna put in another another three. I oh, did actually. cut a screen for that to make a drainage layer. Yep, you... I, yep nope, the, the drainage layer is still intact, and it's all right here. Perfect. do you wanna even, use it? Yep, I do, and I even kept a little bit of the original substrate in here. Nice. Yay! We got going on so here. we can keep the banana tree? Yes, yeah, so we can we can keep we can keep the the banana tree. That's right. Awesome. That's right. All right, what's next? I got a whole mixture here. We got some dairy cows, some orange and blue piscinius. We love our isopods here. Yes, we so. do. So I'm trying to hit every layer here. So the larger species are gonna be really tailored around the top layer in the wood. And then the bottom, you can see some bunch of dwarf whites in here. The dwarf whites are gonna be concentrated in the middle and bottom layers. So we have all aspects covered. And then I also brought some uh, pink springtails. Pink springtails? Yeah, they're, tro they're called tropical pinks. That's um, awesome. There's not that many in here, but again, I think there is a little bit in there, but we could always add as we go. Yeah, so yeah, I'm for go sure. Ahead. I'm gonna dump them in real quick. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is looking amazing. There's even like natural seed pods and hulls in here, which really helps tie it all together. Oh, and here go the bugs. Go free! Hooray! We have isopods and springtails in here now. It really is a little slice of the jungle. That is super cool. Yeah. And here we are with the completed bioactive enclosure. I love it. It turned out great. You know, we put a bunch of bugs in here. Uh, we're gonna be adding in more springtails, you know, as we progress. But really what I like about it is we found the balance. Yeah, it, it's a tough balance in a zoo type setting to have the animals feel comfortable yeah. and feel secure, but also them being, ex or not exposed, but being visible to the public. Yeah. And I think having the combination of the foliage as well as the exposed branches will allow the chondros, or green tree pythons, also called chondro pythons yep. for anyone who doesn't know. I'm so bad I always call them chondros. <laughs> yeah, either one works. Yeah. But having these exposed branches will allow them to feel comfortable and then they're 
bam, they're gonna be right there. Yep. So you did a fantastic job. Thank you so much. Balancing all of this. Um, the most important thing about this is that every single branch in here and everything attached to the wall is secured. So we'll have to see this in like a month to six weeks from now to yeah. see where all the plants yeah. are at and how they're interacting and settling in. I, uh, I'm really, I'm really excited for it. Let's add the green tree pythons. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. And here's the back view of the enclosure. It's just full of foliage and great perches for them. So we're gonna put them in. Here are the, oh, this is our Meraki that we got from a Tinley show. This is our sarong that was actually given to us. Or no, we bought her from someone who was rehoming her. But this is Lucy. I don't think you've Hi, officially- Hi Lucy, look at that blue. Yeah, isn't she, she pretty? She is stunning. Yeah, she has some nice blue colors. She's actually really friendly too for a green tree. So here you go. Check out your new home. Well, new renovated home. Next, we'll put the Meraki in. You can chill up here, how about that? Here is our male sarong actually. Came from a really good breeder in <gasps> Eastern Wisconsin actually. So yeah. he is all over the ladies lately. He's actually, uh, surprise to the channel and everyone watching, he has officially locked up with several of our females. So we might actually get baby green tree pythons here soon. That would, would be great. Wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. We've been noticing a lot of breeding behavior in the zoo. I think because the animals have such big enclosures and we tried to do naturalistic enclosures and I think they're really starting to show us that they appreciate it by breeding. There you go. And last but not least, Dolores. Dolores looks very unhappy. Yep, she got halfway through a shed. Oh dear. Do you want me to get her? Oh, oh really, Dolores? She's like, I disagree. She's a biok, that's what they do. Yep. Yep. Dolores is Dolores. And I still love her spotting. Yeah, she's it's still- It's so random. She was like halfway through a shed and then we interrupted to offer her food and then she stopped shedding and refused to finish. So yeah, Dolores, you are a troublesome child. So let's put you in. All right. Close the door. We're gonna see what they look like from the uh, customer's point of view. Woo! <laughs> it's done! It's done! Oh my oh gosh. Oh my goodness, look at, look at that one. Oh, oh. that pose there is great. Yes. I think what I love about green tree pythons the most is how incredibly strong they are. Yeah, for being a lankier snake, yes. they are incredibly strong. Yes, and like he is just... Just that pose right there is yeah. great. Chilling like a villain. Well, I'm gonna give them a few minutes, I guess, to settle in and then we'll yeah. see where they end up. Awesome. Rex, we have a new green tree python exhibit. It's super pretty and Ed hasn't seen it yet. So, Ed, Ed, Ed. What? You playing with monkey tail skates? I'm trying to fix the one that's trying to bake himself in the... Uh, no, he really likes the UVB grate yeah, though. he doesn't need to be that high though. Come yeah, on. good luck taking him down. Come on. Okay, crisis avoided. I got bit. The uh, monkey tail is down. Oh, I feel so bad for you. Yeah, it's a monkey tail. You risk that when you pick them up. <laughs> okay, come check out the green tree python enclosure. Here, close your eyes. Take my hand. Okay, come this way into the turtle tank. Oh. You didn't go in. Okay, don't open, don't open. Okay, stay there. And let me check. Yep. Oh, oh she's in a good spot. Nice. Okay, three, two, one. Look. Oh, wow. Yeah. That looks really nice. Yeah, it's a good balance, I think, between live plants and branches and the uh, splashes of orchids, too. Mm -hmm. I like the splashes of live plants now. Yeah, he was able to uh, root some onto the side, or start uh, attaching some on the side so they would take root. It's so pretty. That Wait, where's awesome. the fourth? One, two, three. Probably in there. Checking out down, oh, yep, there he is. So Josh, in a nutshell, what BioDude products did you put into this today? Okay. There so, were a lot of boxes. I know. So for starters, we started with my Terra Firma, then we mixed it with my Biodegradables Sphagnum Moss, with the Paperback Bark, Sycamore Bark, my BioShot, Tropical Springtails, Orange Blue Priscinius, Dairy Cow Isopods. For the wood, we used my Cork Bark Branches, we used Cork Bark Flats. As far as the nut pods, we used Assorted Lotus Pods, Burr Oak Seed Pods, Ram's 
head pods. And then for plants, we used philodendrons, stromanthes, creeping fig, neanthabella palm, a shuffleera tree, some live sheet moss, a rattlesnake vine, snake plant, and uh, the epiphyte up there is a staghorn fern. The conjurers seem to be enjoying them. I'm enjoying this because they are loving this enclosure. And Emily, I really can't thank you enough for giving BioDude the opportunity to come here and have and, and have a part in your really special place that you have built okay. here. It's amazing. Thank you for spending so much time on this enclosure and like yeah. flying up here. And thank you to Christina, who's yeah. in the background of this video, Woo! but still a big part of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, thank you for sending these products up here of and course. taking time out of your schedule to spend a couple days up here. I'll be sure to check in with, with Emily and Ed to make sure that everything is thriving, that they're not having any issues, and obviously to help out as much as we can. You guys know me. You can check out my website, thebiodude.com, visit my store in Houston. Thank you everybody for watching. Definitely go check out the BioDude's products. If you are, especially if you're looking to build your own bioactive enclosure, you can get all of these same products yeah. on the BioDude's website, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you to our Patreon backers for your very generous support, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much guys to do the bides.